G'day, Michael from Ironbark Game Studio, and welcome to the 14th part of this tutorial series, which will cover the process of cleaning up the scene in Blender, ready for export to Unity. Exporting and importing an armature with animations can be somewhat of a frustrating process with some of the oddities that can go on. Mostly this is to do with trying to match up the scale between programs. We will cover the best export settings for Blender to Unity, along with some additional steps such as setting up the materials and making the meshes as efficient as possible. Jumping into Blender from last time, we had all of our animations set up. So we had our walk cycles and we had our idle cycles done. Now we need to clean up the mesh and get ready for the export. So as mentioned in a previous tutorial, games engines will only render one side of a face unless you're using a specific double-sided shader. We need to check the direction of these normals of the model and take into consideration single-sided meshes such as the cloth. So if I drop down here and go to face orientation, we can see that in the previous tutorial, we managed to flip the direction of the cloth so that the blue is facing outwards, but we do still have some red facing inwards. So if I was viewing this model in a game engine from this perspective, if I just turn on back face culling, I can't see the back of that cloth there. Now I intend to have all of my meshes as a single material. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to duplicate the single sided meshes in Blender and then flip them the other way around. So I press tab with both the coat and outer coat selected. Um, press A to select all of the faces, shift D to duplicate, and then just right click to cancel the position. I'm then going to press Alt N and then flip what I've currently got selected. So that's going to make this appear as a bit of a sort of purplishy reddish uh, sort of color. So we have two faces exactly overlapping each other and they're both facing in opposite directions. So if I select one of these faces here and press G to grab it, we can see that we've got overlapping vertices there. Just press tab to get out of that. And that's gonna be perfectly fine for what we want to do. Let's just turn off the face orientation. So for each of these meshes, I'm going to apply the mirror modifiers. So I applied mirror modifiers to pieces of armor which I duplicated across to the other side. I'm going to combine all of my meshes together, so that means I need to apply all of my mirror modifiers. So with the arms, I'm going to go to the mirror modifier and just apply that. And I'll just work my way around and apply just the mirror modifiers to each of them. Uh, the little containers in here need to be applied. Uh, the knees there, and that bit there. And I think that's all of the pieces done. Cool. And now I want to combine all of my meshes together with the exception of this little capsule there, so I'm just going to hide that. And the head, helmet, and also the eyes. So all of these other meshes, I'm just going to select them in here. And we'll just select the um, the body as the main reference. And we're just going to go Control J. And that's going to join them all together into a single mesh. Now you wouldn't want to do this if you're creating a game where the character could swap out different items of clothing. So if we had, for example, different pieces of armor that you could put along the arms, then you wouldn't want to combine them all into a single mesh. But single meshes are going to be more efficient in the game engine. The reason why we're not doing the head and eyes as part of this mesh is because we want them to be an object which we can turn on and off. So if we want to have the head visible, we can turn that on in the game engine, or if we wanted to be helmet visible, we can turn that on as well. So for the head and the eyes, I'll just select the eyes, apply the mirror modifier, and control J to join that with the head. Uh, and then we've got the head, helmet, and the body as uh, three separate meshes. If we select our mesh and then press N and look in the transform properties, we want to make sure that the location, rotation, and scale is set to 000, 000, 000 and 111. If it's not, you can apply these values with Control A and just go through the list location, rotation, and scale. So now we can import these into Unity. So I'm just going to marquee select everything I want to import, including the armature here. And we're going to go to File export fbx 
So an FBX is going to export data such as animation, the rig, and also the wake paints. Something like a .obj, that's only going to export a mesh. So make sure you're doing an FBX. And I'm going to come across here into the settings. Now, the one I want to tick on is selected objects. And I'm going to show you an example of what these settings look like just with the default settings and what they look like with settings appropriate for Unity. So I'm not going to change anything else in here. And we'll need rename this character were underscore and I'll just call this uh, default for the default settings and I'm going to click on export FBX jumping across into unity so I'm going to assume you have some unity knowledge and that you can uh, create a project so I've got a just a fresh unity project set up just the standard rendering pipeline here and I'm going to import my character so I can just go to the folder where I've saved the FBX and drag and drop that into the assets and there is my character here so if I drag and drop this into the scene, we have our character there, and it's looking pretty good actually. There are some subtleties within this character though, which may affect the character controller or what you're trying to program or do with it. So if I open up the uh, flow default here, we have an armature and we have the three meshes. But as you can see, if I select one of these meshes, the scale is set to 100, 100, 100, 100. I've also got a rotation here as well. So that's not ideal. We also have an armature in here and the scale of that is also set to 100. But if we open up the armature and take a look at each of the different bones, the scale is set to one. Having this scale so big can affect some things in Unity. So if we're trying to do physics like cloth physics, that might mess with it. If we're trying to parent objects to the hands like a weapon, that might also be affected by the scale of the parent object. So we really want this scale to be 111 in all of our meshes. One more thing of note is that we've also imported all of the controllers, um, but these are completely useless to us because Unity doesn't import the constraints. Moving these controls around does nothing, um, so they're just kind of in the way, they're not doing anything. So let's flip back across to Blender, and we're going to go to our export settings uh, once again. So File, Export, and we'll choose FBX. So first thing, selected objects, still turned on from last time. Coming down here into the transform settings. So we want to apply these scalings and we're going to choose FBX unit scale. We then want to come down to the apply transform and then turn that on. So that is going to set our transform from that 100 scale to one. Inside the armature, we're going to tick on only deform bones and untick add leaf bones. So only deform bones, that's going to get rid of all of our controls which aren't actually affecting the character or the character mesh. And add leaf bones, these are little bones that gets added to the ends of deformation bones. There is absolutely no point into them because they don't actually do anything. They're not controlling the mesh in any way. And let's just get rid of the uh, default on the name here so we don't override what we have and we'll export this. Jumping across back into Unity, let's drag and drop our new export into the project here. And let's just grab this one and move it out of the way and drag and drop the new one in here. So opening this up, we see that we have our armature, body, head, helmet, but the body, head, and helmet now have the rotation set to zero, 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 and it has the scale set to one, one, and one. So that's what we want in there. And I realized one thing with the helmet is I didn't actually reset the position of it. So if I go back into Blender, select my helmet and press N, we can see that the location is up here. If we just want to reset this, press Control A and then just reset the location so it's 000. Now if we export this all again, File, Export, FBX, it saved all of our settings from last time. One tip when we're exporting our files is up in the operator presets, we can click on this little plus here to create a new preset so that when we open a new Blender file, we can always save them with these specific settings. So if we go plus, then we rename this to something like Unity Export and click OK. We're always going to have a Unity Export inside of our operator presets when we want to export something. Export, that'll override the file. Come back into Unity, we'll delete this one. 
drag the new one in. That'll just replace it in the scene and our helmet should be at zero, zero, zero. So again, that might come in handy if you've got specific things with switching out character items or doing other such things in the programming. So helmet, body and low, zero, 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 one, one, one. The armature, we'll set the scale back to one, one and one. It does have a rotation, minus 90. That should be fine. I don't think that's really going to affect anything. But importantly, the armature and all of the bones have a scale of one, one and one. So if you're going to child objects to them, they're not going to be affected by the scale. In terms of some import settings we can do with this, if we go to the rig here, we can set the animation type from generic and we can change it to humanoid. So if we have multiple animations and they all have a humanoid based rig, we can set the animation type to humanoid and then we can share animations between them. This is also handy if you want to download animations from say the Unity Asset Store and if they're set to humanoid, they're also going to work with your rig as well. So I'm gonna click apply. And if we click on this configure box here, all going well, our rig should appear green. So all of our bones in the armature here should line up with these ones here. If they don't, you might have to manually uh, line them up by just clicking and dragging them across here. Um, but otherwise, everything should be green. Our animations will work on all humanoid characters now. And just click done down here when you're done looking at that. The next thing to look at is the animation tab here. And if we scroll down, we can see that we've got our armature, which is the name of our armature. And then we've got idle one, idle two, and war, which is the names of our animations. So we can just click through these and we can see a little preview of our animation down here. And if we click the play button, we should see our walk cycle there. Got our idle cycle there. And our idle two there. Another thing you can see is if you open up the little file in the assets, you've got the three animations in here as well, along with the meshes and a material. So the material is going to be the next thing we're going to set up. So let's jump across to the materials tab. We can see that we've got a matte underscore flirt, but we don't have the material actually set up in our project yet. So let's click on extract materials and we'll just save them in the base folder there. So select folder, and now we have material here. We need our textures inside of Unity, so let's import them now. So we can just select the textures in our folder, drag and drop them into here, jump into Unity. We might get a little warning saying that the material is using a normal app. I'm just going to go fix now. And what that's going to do is it's going to convert our normal map into a normal map whereas our other textures are just set to default. So we should have our base material here, our base color. We don't have to do anything with that. We have a metallic and a roughness. So for the metallic and roughness, like in Blender, we need to turn off sRGB. So untick that and click apply. So that's just going to use the non-color data. And then for our normal map, if we don't get that little message, we do need to set the texture type from default to normal map. And these textures have automatically been applied to the other characters uh, material, but, but because we imported two of them, uh, the second one isn't getting it. So we need to manually assign those textures to the material. So when importing your materials and textures, always extract the materials first. It might link them up automatically. If they don't, you'll just have to do it manually. So for the shader type, I'm gonna set it from standard and I'm gonna choose Autodesk Interactive. So that's going to be our PBR workflow. For the albedo, I'm just gonna drag and drop the base color in there, the metallic, Drag and drop that in there, roughness in there, and then finally we have our normal map. And we can see on the other one, it hasn't actually applied all of those texture maps, it's only applied the base color. So do make sure you grab each of those maps and put them in the correct spots. Our textures are actually in 4K, but they're only being displayed in 2K. So if we select all four of our textures here, the max size we can set from 2048 to 4096 and click apply. You only need to do this if you have higher resolution textures than 2K. And, oh no, we forgot to do one thing and that was apply the mirror to the, uh, the pieces of armor in there. Easy fix to do this. Let's hop back into Blender. And we've got our armor plate in here. So I'm just going to select the armor plate, Control L to select all the pieces, P to separate the selection. 
press tab again. So this is its own individual mesh now. Let's apply a mirror modifier. And I'm just going to drag and drop the mirror, for, mirror modifier above the armature and then apply this. Then shift select the character again, control J to join it back up. Select everything, file, export, FBX. Keep it the same name so it overrides it. Export FBX. It should save all of our settings so long as we haven't closed Blender again. Otherwise, we can just choose our Unity export um, operator preset. And in Unity, I'm going to grab my character here. I'm just going to delete them. So I just need to grab my FBX, drag it back in. There it is, character should appear. We need to make sure that everything's lined up again. So in the materials, just drag and drop the material we made. Hit apply. That's there. Animation tab. We didn't change anything in here, but we can see we've got our animations back in there. The rig. We might just need to set this back to humanoid and click apply. Otherwise, everything should be back to where it was. And we've got the, uh, the armor set up again properly. All right, and from there we are pretty much done. So we have our character in Unity, but there's one more fun thing we can do, and that is applying the animation so that we can see it playing sort of live in the viewport. But let's go to the window, sequencing and timeline, and I'm gonna drag and drop the timeline window in here next to the project. I'm going to select my character here, and with that selection, I'll click on the create button. And we'll just keep it as a flow timeline dot playable and save that. And this has created an animation timeline where we can put our animations in. So I'm just going to go to uh, frame zero there, drag and drop the flow object into the scene, into the timeline, and I'm going to go add animation track. And then with the flow animation track, I can right click in here and I can go add from animation clip. And I can choose the animation which I've currently got imported. Uh, because we imported the character twice, we're going to have double the number of animations, but each of them should work fine because they're using the uh, the same rig. So just double click on that, and that's going to add the animation idle in there. And if we hit space, that's going to play the animation. If we right click again, add from animation clip, we can choose our walk cycle. Like so, we could play that. And if we wanted to extend that, we just copy and paste this. So Control C, Control V, paste that a few times. So I've got this uh, longer walk animation in there. We can also overlap animations. So say, just delete those. So I've got this walk cycle. We pull this across from the idle instead of snapping to it. It'll sort of transition from the idle to the walk cycle. And because we can, let's just add in our second idle animation here at the end. So there we go, fresh play, we've got our idle. Transitions into our walk cycle for a few, for a few loops and then transitions into the idle animation too. And there we go, we have our animations inside of the Unity scene. So that's it for exporting an animated character into Unity with the animations and materials all set up. If you develop in Unreal, then check out the next tutorial. The final part of this tutorial series, which is part 16, that's going to cover creating a rendered image in Blender. So this could be used as a character thumbnail, promotional image, or just something nice to show off in your portfolio. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you found it useful. You can check out our Patreon link in the description for a variety of rewards such as starting files, tutorial notes, and early access to the rest of the series. And I'll see you in the next one.